Working on a good quality Scotch return to boiler part one. After a period of time in my acid bath, followed by some ultrasonic cleaning, it's time to think about the cladding. This was a clip from the last video showing me putting the boiler into the acid bath. Then I put it in my ultrasonic cleaner and now it looks like this. Apart from some paint specks, it's very good indeed. I would assume that there aren't any paint specks inside the boiler, but I bet it's very clean. The acid in my acid bath is actually called Kill Rock K and it's a kettle descaler, it's formic acid. And the combination of the acid plus my ultrasonic cleaner has made this boiler look a good bit better. Before cladding the boiler, I'm cleaning up this bit. It's a serial number, and when I paint the boiler before I clad it, I don't want to paint over this. These stamped in identification marks need to be very visible. A boiler needs to have an identification number. This has a serial number and a working pressure number, which is even better. And the serial number and details will be written on the boiler certificate when I get it. It's time for a bit of masking. Here's my very old pair of scissors that cut sandpaper and should be blunt, but aren't. As you can clearly see, the scissors are not having any difficulty cutting the masking tape. I'm sticking it firmly in place underneath the boiler, over the details. The brackets need to be straightened, so I'm doing this very, very gently with a small hammer. If you haven't done this before, be very careful because copper is a soft metal. If you apply too much force, you will do severe damage. And with this bit of gentle persuasion, the main mountings for the boiler are now quite straight. As I intend to paint the boiler using spray paint, starting with etching primer, I thought it would be a good idea to slide some silicone rubber tubing over the threads on the end of the parts that support the chimney. I'm not worried about the rest of the threads in the boiler bushes because they are not very tight to start with. Here I'm removing the blanking plugs from the water gauge mounting. Two of them are inspection points but the front ones are where the water gauge was originally mounted. They go back into my box of small blanking plugs. i found in this job you can never have too many blanking plugs of various different sizes, because it's a pain having to break off the boiler test job to make blanking plugs in the lathe. However, today I am not testing the boiler with a hydraulic pump. I'm just test fitting some mahogany strip wood to see what it's going to look like. As you would expect, as wood is a natural product, then no two mahogany strips are going to be exactly the same. But I do need for them to be somewhere near. You don't have to plank your boiler in mahogany, you can plank it in whatever you like. I've often seen on some boilers where the strips are alternately light and dark, and this can look okay, but I personally do not care for that effect. Before I do anything else though, I need to refit the special boiler band that goes at the front of the boiler. This is a bit unusual, as it is soldered to a brass ring at the front of the boiler. Then from the front of the boiler to the brass ring is a quarter of an inch. When it's all back together, this looks quite good. You can see why it's done. Look at the hinge. The effect is just something different at the smoke box end. And I don't know if I should say this, but you can be a bit sloppy with your cutting of the mahogany because you line them up at the other end. But at the smoke box end, the mahogany strips took under the boiler band. Which means that if you cut some of them slightly short, it won't look too bad. Making sure that the special front boiler band is in exactly the right position, I mark the length that I require using a pencil. I always use a pencil for marking mahogany strip, because if you use a felt tip pen, the ink is very difficult to remove. Here you see the principle, it's just a case of sticking all these in place. I went over to the bandsaw and cut quite a few. I tapped the end of the pieces of mahogany strip on the bandsaw's table, just to make sure they were all level. Then I cut several of them to length at the same time. I worked it out that I need 17 of these for each side of the boiler from the centre part. But unfortunately, I didn't have too many pieces of this mahogany, and I really didn't have enough anyway, and it's too thin. But in order to show the problems that I'm having, as this is a tutorial, I went ahead and cut 34 pieces of mahogany to the right length. And here they are fitted to the boiler shell. Most of them look okay, and these are the ones from the same batch. You can see one or two rogue ones in there, one that's too light and some are too dark. I substituted a couple, but I definitely do not want this stripey effect. 
As I mentioned, this mahogany is too thin. I need to use 3mm mahogany, which will have some insulation properties. So I've just been on eBay and bought some, and it's 3mm thick by 6mm wide by 475mm long, but obviously I will be chopping them up. I bought a pack of 50, and they should be okay, unless they're all different colours. But if they're from the same batch, they should match okay. And any that are the wrong colour can be fitted underneath. This mahogany that I've just bought won't arrive till the weekend, but I've got plenty still to do on other jobs. A partially dismantled 12-inch Southworth water pump has just arrived in the post from a customer who wants me to repair it. I'll be looking over that later today. You'll see the results possibly in tomorrow's video. For the moment though, I'm seeing how many of these pieces of mahogany actually match. You can see one that doesn't match at all. That would look terrible if it was halfway down one side. The next question, how am I going to fix this mahogany strip to the boiler? Well, actually, I mean the new stuff when it arrives, not the stuff I've got on the bench. I would normally use cyanoacrylate adhesive, commonly known as superglue, and I use the medium viscosity stuff. If you're doing a job like this, do not use the thin stuff because it runs all over the place. All I have to do now is wait for the mahogany to arrive before I can do the job. And to conclude this video, I'm going to do some painting. In a recent video, I put an engine on my turntable. At one time I used to use this a lot. I'd sit an engine on it or something I was working on and rotate it, keeping my hands out of the shot to make the video look better. But during the move to the new place, for some reason I lost it. But about a month ago I found it. A viewer wrote in and suggested that I could use this for painting things on. Instead of having to manually rotate and reposition the parts all the time. And I can't understand why that never dawned on me. Sometimes my brain does go wrong. Here, for instance, where the boiler had been on its end, it picked up some debris from the bench, so I had to wipe it off and respray the end again. From this day forth, my small turntable will live in the outer part of the workshop where I do the painting. And for anyone who's curious as to which paint I'm using, here it is. Grey High Build Etching Primer from Autopaint Northern. The details are on the can. This is by far the best etching primer I've ever used. It's time for me to go now and look at this Southworth water pump that arrived in the post. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.